thank you for giving me opportunity to present Polish copyright reform. And I wanted to show my gratitude to Eiffel and Teresa in particular for ongoing support in this in this process, including uh, including the latest the latest comments and on this on this on this slide and and uh, the the document about the, the copyright reform which will be published soon on Eiffel website. As you can see on this slide, there are four 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 logos. This is the, the, the joint group of uh, labor organization, including Polish Labor as, uh, Association, uh, Conference of, of uh, Academic Library di Director, uh, um, Poznan Scientific Library uh, Foundation, and EBIP uh, Foundation. This is, this is a portal for librarians. We joined together our forces, and we, we issued common statement during the, during the process. So, so, so all the time when I will be referring to, to uh, library position, I will be referring to our common position. After as already uh, mentioned, there is a special website on, on, uh, on the Eiffel mm, mm, uh, uh, website about the project, so feel free to, to, to check, especially the, the, the legislative process because it was quite long and there was a lot of documents produced. Unfortunately, our statements are only in Polish, but there is a background in English, so 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 uh, this this site could be could be very useful for those who want to learn more about the about the Polish report. To understand the process, you have to know that that we have a two consultations. First consultation, informal, in that sense that uh, the government uh, uh, um, opened it uh, for stakeholders. Uh, was held and it's still held uh, in the platform, permanent platform, which is called Corporate Forum. We were invited. We were invited uh, uh, for meetings. There was a special website, and it's still uh, uh, available. Uh, there was a special website with with uh, documents prepared by the by the government for meetings. Some bullet points for discussion. You can see my. Uh, a, a clip uh, uh, from from one of the meetings, the third meeting. Uh, uh, the meetings were recorded and broadcasted, and uh, and they are still uh, available online. So we we could also refer, go back to to to, to the beginnings of the of the discussion. And after the after the meeting, we had usually one month for for producing. Uh, our statement in writing and sending to, to and send them to, to the Ministry of Culture. The second layer of consultation is cons where the consultation of the draft law. So after the after the debate uh, in the copyright forum under the copyright forum, we had uh, the, the ministry produced the draft law, the draft law uh, 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 of, of uh, changes copyright uh, 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 act, and again. The process is quite transparent. You, you see here some uh, in the box some some uh, elements. The, the, on the website there were, there were um, all stages from from governmental consultation to the parliamentary meetings um, and all documents produced uh, uh, and stakeholders comments were uh, are available on 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 the website. Um, so it's it's really transparent. And with the draft law and the draft regulation, which 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 follow the the law, law is a basis and the regulation are detailed. Mm, uh, we always had an explanatory note. We had an impact assessment, and after the consultation, we had we had a consultation report with with answer from the ministry. What is their position about uh, uh, about certain uh, uh, solution suggested by by by, by stakeholders? So so. Um, from the advocacy point of view, this is a very, very useful um, uh, uh, set of information, especially uh, uh, possibility to to learn um, all stakeholders' position and react uh, uh, um, uh, uh, to them uh, um, during the during the, the consultation is is is, is really. Valuable. So, so if you if you are before the, the reform, um, please suggest to your to your to your uh, government to um, to open the, the, the to make the consultation as much transparent as it possible. 
so so the basis for for cooperating in Poland is the uh, is the act the, uh, from from uh, 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 1994 corporate and related uh, uh, rights law and we, in 2004 we joined the European Union so so it was already the act was already amended a couple of times but the la the latest the latest amendment from 20 no, November 2015 it entering force in 2000 uh, in uh, 20 November 2015 was this was this uh, uh, um, um, document we, we discussed for, 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 for a couple of months. Plus, we had four regulations also uh, open for consultation on the very final stage in, in October 2016, regulation which actually um, introduced some solutions. Uh, uh, it's about uh, out-of-commerce work, about orphan work, about public lending rights, so, so, we, so, so they're very important and make a bigger picture of, 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 the, of the changes. So you cannot read only the, the, the act itself, you have to read it uh, with the regulation. As I, as I already mentioned, we, we had already some changes in our copyright law um, when we joined the European Union and afterwards. And um, the Ministry uh, 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 decided to, to read it, uh, the changes once again. So it was a better implementation on, on so-called InfoStock directive. After 10 years, the ministry decided to, to, to check whether, whether we, we, we implemented it in a proper way. We have revised implementation of rental uh, directive, revised in that sense that we implemented it, but in a very limited manner, and we had to change it and extend the, 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 the scope of, of, of uh, mm, this directive to public libraries. I will mention them and comment it later on. And we have to, as, as all uh, EU uh, uh, member countries, implement uh, the directive on certain permitted uses of orphan work. This is, that was a new implementation. And we are not forced, but, but uh, the government decided to implement uh, so a soft law, the memorandum of, of understanding on key principles on the digitization and making available of out-of-commerce work. There are only two countries which implemented it, Germany and France, and uh, our implementation, according to the ministry, follows the German one. So, so, so the solution from German implementation are, are reflected in Polish, in Polish um, um, uh, corporate act. We have some uh, key amendments for uh, for libraries. So, first, there was some changes in, in, in permitted use and exception limitation for libraries. We introduced permitted use exception for orphan works. Same with out of commerce works. With uh, there was there were some changes in, in, in permitted use in education and science. Um, uh, there was an introduction. We had a public lending rights and abolition of the paying public domain, which is which is very interesting because we were we are on, almost one of the latest countries in, in in the world with with this with this um, um, with uh, with this uh, uh, restriction on on public domain. So. How does uh, permitted use by libraries has changed or was remodeled? So, first of all, uh, the list of beneficiaries was extended to museum, research, and scientific institution, and so on. So, so before the 20 November 2015, there was only three three beneficiaries: schools, libraries, and archives. And now the list is 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 longer, which do not reflect. Actually, the, the library needs, but 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 it it has to be stressed that that really the list of of of, uh, of institution uh, which might use uh, exception for libraries is is longer. But because the exception is uh, but the, because the list is longer, um, uh, the ministry according to the directive, InfoSec directive, uh, um, 
uh, put some requirements on, on, on this institution. So uh, it has to be institution uh, um, which provides activities not for direct on indirect financial gain. For us, the, the, the uh, uh, just just to mention that that uh, about the, the, the direct on I, uh, indirect financial gain, the libraries are allowed under the Act of Libraries. They they may charge for some services like like library card. Uh, uh, so this is this is not. Uh, direct or indirect financial gain. Um, from our point of view, a very interesting change, and I'm, I'm still concerned about the change, is in the definition of, of uh, 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 in lending. Because uh, before the, the, the uh, uh, 20 November 2015, uh, libraries were allowed to provide access for disseminated works. Uh, we implemented rental directive, so so the ministry said that we have to we have to change the uh, the word in, in the exception. So so now we have we have lending, which is uh, uh, in the meaning of the EU directive uh, uh, means making available for use for a limited period of time and not for direct or indirect economic and or commercial advantage that we had it in. In, in the bullet above, when it it is made through establishments which are accessible to the public. From 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 my perspective, um, this is not just a change of of of, of words, yeah, the clarification, uh, as we were taught. Um, providing access is a bit broader, I think, than the lending. So it's hard to assess the impact of this change yet because we still we still don't have uh, um, um, lawyers, uh, uh, you know, opinion after the, the certain period of time where we expect some comments and and uh, books and and, and textbooks about the, the, the change. But I feel that, that it might influence somehow somehow uh, library activities. We have. Uh, a new, very broad exception for preservation. I will, I will discuss it in the next slide. And we have some clarification in the provision of the access on premises at the dedicated terminals. What about the uh, digital preservation? It's a, it's a, it's very, it is very interesting because three words make, makes a difference. Uh, you have in 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 both three words which from from the from the previous version that was exception for making copies of disseminated works in order to supplement them maintain or protect one on uh, collections you have to understand that in polish language copies doesn't mean uh, electronic copy uh, copy means tangible Object. So, so this uh, this exception was limited only to to works which were in physical format. And the second layer was disseminated works. Exception was uh, was for for uh, uh, disseminated works. And disseminated uh, means make public publicly available in any form with the consent of the uh, author. Of its, of its author, so not we couldn't use it for unpublished uh, works. And the third was about own collection, uh, 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 which means that 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 uh, uh, it doesn't have to uh, belong to our collection. So uh, the ministry decided to remove those two words, copies and disseminated works. And now we have reproduction again because you, the ministry decided to 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 clear update the, the the law according to the legal terms taken from directive in post of directive. So uh, making copies is replaced by by reproduction, yeah? but there is no specific format. We could make copy in a digital format directly, 
and uh, because there is no disseminated work, that the word disseminated was, was removed, now we could reproduce all sorts of work, including unpublished work. But there is small limitation of this exception comparing to the previous one. Work has to be taken from library own collection. It was um, deliberately changed because the ministry wanted to, to avoid a situation when the library doesn't uh, buy the, 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 the issue, but supplemented issue or, of journal, for instance, but supplemented it by, by borrowing from, from other uh, library. And because the supplement is quite broad, the word means that, that uh, they, uh, they wanted to avoid this situation. It, we could, we could um, preserve what was already in our, um, in our, uh, on our stocks. And the provision for dedicated terminals, if you are familiar with, with InfoSoc Directive, you know that, that um, uh, it introduced an exception for libraries to provide access of copyrighted words, uh, works on the dedicated terminals at the library premises. So very limited. It, they couldn't be available online. You have to go to the library to, to consult, consult works on, on, on library terminals. Uh, we had some we had some doubts about about this provision, but actually there are now uh, 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 um, explained in in in, in uh, SJ Darmstadt case, very very famous case for for libraries for digital libraries. As uh, you, you see the link here about the about uh, 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 going to the to the uh, webinar previous webinar IFL webinar on this case, it will be available. It will be live this afternoon or, or tomorrow, so uh, uh, feel free to, to click tomorrow because the webinar was very, very interesting and, and uh, uh, explained some, some, some very detailed issues connected with this case. What this case um, means for, for how the implementation of the case uh, was reflected in Polish law. So first of all, mm, we are know now that uh, number of copies made available at terminals must not exceed the number of physical copies held by the library. That is explicitly stated in the in the in the uh, in the provision for for libraries. Uh, the second the second layer the second clarification was about digital about, about the offer. Because InfoSoc directly says that that um, that um, libraries are, are allowed to, to use works on, on, on dedicated terminals if they are not uh, uh, already um, bought or, or licensed digital files. And again, we have this we have this this, this clarification in 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 our in our law now that that. Um, uh, digitization making available uh, works on library terminals is permitted only if the resources in question is not already available in the library in digital form. And the third, and the third uh, clarification, very very important for libraries, was about possibility of, of printing from terminals, printing uh, and, and uh, downloading on USB sticks because Polish li libraries. Uh, uh, blocked this access for 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 uh, years for users because they were sure whether this is permitted or no and and in that case one of the questions sent to the uh, court of justice in Luxembourg was exactly about this possibility and and the court said said yes it is possible if there is a private copy exception in the country and we have private copy exception in Poland, so, so it is now clear that printing from terminals is, is possible. So we are expecting to mm, libraries will, will, will give this opportunity for, for its users. Now we are moving to Orphan Works Directive implementation. And, and uh, 
this this um, part of of a form uh, was was really um, um, thoroughly uh, um, negotiated. But um, actually, the the, the 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 directive itself doesn't give uh, much space for 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 countries like Poland to to implement other solutions at this stage. Uh, so our implementation follows more or less the directive. There was an idea uh, at the beginning that we uh, that uh, uh, we go further and there will be possibility of, of commercial use. But I say, and the minister was quite surprised that, that right holders, some right holders were, ag were against this idea. And just when, when the, 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 the law was published, now they, they realized that, that, that this is a missed opportunity, but sticking to, to library business, non-commercial activities. So according to the directive, and that, that is in the Polish law, we have certain types of, uh, of works. Uh, uh, which could be uh, uh, orphan. They have to be published in a form of book, newspapers, magazine, and another type of print um, publication. It could be an audiovisual works and uh, works fixed on video and phonograms. And orphan works are also works which are pictures and, and photos which are embedded to this, this, this type of, of, of works. Definitely are not covered, and this is taken from the directive, uh, standalone photographs and works of art, which is which is really difficult to understand for those librarians who have big, big uh, picture collections, really. But this is this is how uh, how the directive uh, um, um, was 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 crafted or drafted, and uh, there was a space for for countries in the directive for for solution for works which are, were published anonymously or under a uh, pseudonym and, and the ministry decided to, to, to not cover this type of works by orphan works um, mm, exception. And again, more on orphan works directive, there is a link to either resources. Here you have a list of beneficiary organization. Uh, this a branch of institution may benefit from this from this exception. Uh, there are libraries, educational institution, archives, museums. There are some some named institution like the National Film Archive. I didn't put it on the slide, but but the Institute of Music and Dance, the National uh, Audiovisual Institute, Documentary Film Study uh, Studio. So it's it's quite it's quite a long list of of organization. Which might benefit from this from this exception. Um, there are two permitted uses of, of of orphan works. It is a reproduction for including the purposes of preservation and uh, cataloging and digitization of collection and making available on the internet for the purpose of culture and education. This is also uh, is taken from the directive, but um, one has to understand that it means that uh, the library cannot uh, um, produce a phonogram with with uh, sounds uh, uh, with, uh, 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 which are orphan. With some, uh, uh, they could be stream uh, available uh, in a file, a streaming file on the internet, but they cannot be uh, sell in the library. We, we cannot use it in a uh, in a broader uh, manner. It, it is allowed only for for reproduction and 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 uh, uh, making available on the internet. And same as 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 uh, in in. Uh, uh, preservation. This uh, this permitted use apply only um, applies only to works that belongs to the collection of the institution. And I mentioned already that that there is um, mm, this is only for non-commercial activities, but there is a space according to again according to the directive for entities to charge for the use of orphan works. In the directive itself is 
uh, um, directly refers to the public-private partnership partnerships. We don't have it in Poland, actually. So, so it's hard for me to to come up with a, with an idea uh, how the libraries could charge for the use of orphan orphan works and how much. But but still, there is this this um, uh, possi possibility in in the law. Um, what is really interesting and it could be difficult is, is, is the requirement for exception that, uh, that the use <coughs> for the use uh, uh, you have to uh, before the use you have to do the diligent search in a good fit. Um, and the list of, of, uh, uh, of sources which has to be checked before before, we uh, we establish the status of, of, of works as an orphan is longer than in 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 the directive. Our aim was to to have to keep the list as it is in the directive because because again as it is in the directive, if the entity carrying out the diligent search uh, um, come up with the idea that in this case the information could be in a different source, it has to be the source has to be checked. So so. So um, uh, it doesn't mean that, that, that we will stick only to the to this short list from, from, from the directive. But the ministers uh, extended the list uh, um, um, by saying that, that we will have a legal certainty to provide more legal certainty for the institution and um, I must say that I don't see I don't see this, this certainty with, with, with the longer list. Uh, but we'll see because this this, this this is a quite new regulation so, so there is not no uh, many many uh, um, um, good practice uh, established yet in the institution. Uh, again the, the the part of 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 um, of this diligent search is is um, the, the way how you keep the record from your from your search and and, and again we wanted to to be very um, we wanted uh, uh, that the ministry will show us really de detailed um, um, guidelines or, or uh, on documentation requirements but in in the regulation which implement the the, the the solution for orphan was we have only information that it has to be in a digital file in standardized form so there is an open uh, room for for institution to to establish uh, their own practice i would say that 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 maybe this is good from 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 general point of view the, that we have more space in this but but from practical point of view, thinking about institutions, I would say that they would prefer really have a guidelines and, and uh, uh, detailed guidelines how to, how to keep their um, <coughs> records and what has to be in this documentation of, of diligent search. We, there is also a possibility to subcontract the diligent search to a third party. And we had a long discussion in writing uh, with the Minister of Culture, because there is an issue of liability, because we are we wanted to know whether um, uh, a third party uh, by signing agreement with the library is by law taking responsibility for 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 this diligent search and and good faith. So what what happened if if, if it if would be not uh, uh, in a good uh, done in a good faith? And the minister said uh, that the responsible uh, institution would be the library, but it could be modeled in a contract. So the liability could be could be um, um, taken by the, by the third party by signing uh, uh, this contract and the special clause should be should be included. So we, we again we, we would like to see this this type of, of for clause and this type of contract um, in writing, and and see whether the third party would like to take this responsibility. <coughs> the the final the final 
um, uh, element of, of this, this implementation is, uh, which I wanted to thread, it's, it's quite broad in, uh, um, uh, provisions about different uh, aspects of, of orphan workers, but I wanted to stress this, this, this moment when, when the right harvest could end the orphan work status. And I wanted to show you how, how draft has changed uh, uh, the, the, the idea how to, how to compensate the right holders for the use of, of uh, orphan works has changed from the draft to the final text uh, without uh, mm, you know, judging at the moment which is uh, totally better. I think the, 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 the previous one was, was slightly better for institutions but, but some people could, could say that, that remuneration is, is not the right word, the fair compensation is, is better. The directive says about the fair compensation and gives, and gives the, 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 the freedom for member countries, certain freedom to, 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 to establish some, some, some elements for, for this compensation. So uh, in the draft we had uh, that uh, uh, um, idea that, that the remuneration will be only when the entity using the work um, derived income from its use. As I said, we don't have public-private partnership in Poland, so it would be hard to find the, the moment when the library would charge for, for, for access to orphan works. Uh, and there was, there was another factor that the amount to be paid has to be taken uh, for the, 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 the determining the amount uh, to be paid, it has to be taken the public interest of the institution. Now we have three elements for for, for compensation, um, and three elements together. So 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 when when the right holders would like to would like to be compensated for 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 orphan work or work his work um, uh, uh, in use, he has to showed, uh, uh, she has to calculate the nature and manner of use of the work. I think this is about uh, about whether this was um, uh, from public, public institution, libraries, so what, for, for instance, broadcaster, national broadcaster, they have, we have a different, different interest, uh, possible income, again, and damage suffered by the right holders due to such a case. So I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, I really don't want to see libraries paying for compensation, but that will be very interesting in the future to see uh, how it is how it is how it is calculated. And um, the second the second um, uh, exception is about out of commerce works. Maybe I should mention with orphan works. That, that orphan works are those works uh, uh, suppose, um, uh, right holders can be located in very in a very short short uh, uh, um, uh, definition. With out of commerce, there's a different different issue. They are still protected by copyright, like orphan works. We know right holders, but they are no longer available on the market. So there is no business need for republish them. But there is a uh, lot of interest, um, mm, lot of interest um, uh, uh, of the greater public. So this is a very, very uh, uh, interesting uh, part of, of a library collection, out of commerce works. So as I said, we 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 implemented this soft law, the memorandum on the understanding from 2011, and again. Uh, I wanted to stress that in the document the ministry uh, um, said that this is a that we follow the German in, uh, the German uh, uh, solution the German uh, implementation. Um, so, in Polish uh, law, the definition of out of commerce works is like that there are works which are not available to commercial end user in the number that satisfies the reasonable needs of the end users. There is no calculator for this, or by way of making them publicly, uh, publicly available in such a manner that everyone could access them at the place and time selected thereby. So, so um, it has to be limited access uh, to these works through commercial channels. 
they are available on libraries and they are available in 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 um, uh, hand uh, second hand market yes but they are not in official uh, commercial channels and this is a I said exception but this is actually a a license solution exception in that sense that, that there is a new um, new space for for institution to 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 have an access to to provide access to these works but this is a this is a solution based on the contract between the library and the collecting society so so uh, um there are some some rules in the law which regulates this, the, the the way the contract is done but 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 this, uh, just 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 some rules and and uh, and uh, um, contract in this definition is uh, is open for for negotiation, especially for example for price for for this out of commerce work. It's quite limited, only to works published in books, newspapers, magazines, in the form of print publishing, and only works published for the first time in the territory of the Republic of Poland before the. Uh, May uh, 1994, so so it's it's really limited. Uh, it's excluded translation into Polish of work of work created in foreign language, and it's uh, only for for non-commercial use. But uh, but we cannot judge this this this, this solution yet because uh, and we and we I must say that we thought and we are still believe that this is a good solution for especially for newspapers. Because uh, um, the collecting society responsible for for contracting with, with libraries and other institutions has to be uh, has to be chosen through the competition process, and the minister has to announce the competition, and and and, and the competition is not yet announced. We thought that it would be in, at the end of uh, 2015. We have a summer 2016. We are still expecting expecting this this. Uh, the, the, the competition, so so we can, it, it, it's really hard to say how it will be uh, um, in practice. We have to wait for 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 for, for appointment of the collecting society. And just final, just to final slides, it's about permitted uses in education and science. Now uh, we have a longer uh, enumerate, but still enumerated list of entities. It's, it's much different than, than the, in the directive, which is open in, in, in this respect. Uh, entities must not be for a commercial nature, but, but it, it is clear that private schools uh, are covered by the exception. We have to say that there is no remuneration for holders for, for education and science permitted to use. It has to be, the, the provision has changed because because now we have we follow the, the definition from 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 the impulse of directive that that uh, it is uh, permitted to use the works uh, for illustration of, of content presented for education purposes and the, mm, and the three three possibilities use of the the disseminated work in the original and in translation we might reproduce reproduct minor works or fragments of larger works and and it is clear now. It wasn't sure. We weren't sure what, that the standard works as photographs and poems, short, short uh, 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 and small uh, works, may be used in the uh, uh, as a whole. And we have a new exception for virtual learning environments. This is for e-learning. It's again taken from the directive, and we could we could uh, provide access uh, to digital file uh, 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 for students. In the close, in the closed networks uh, with passwords, and 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 this is not open for for everybody. This is for for group of students or researchers, but, but this is quite broad exception towards e-learning, e-learning, and there is no remuneration for this. And just the final, just the final slide about the public lending rights. This is the solution you you may know you may know from other countries. For us, it was important that that. That lending, uh, that that the, the money uh, for lending by libraries is is based uh, on uh, uh, lending in public libraries only. There was a there was a tried attempt to cover all types of libraries and all type of using libraries, but there is only now there are only public libraries. They sent some statistics, 
uh, from, from 8,000 libraries, public libraries in Poland, there's only 60 libraries. This is a panel of libraries which sends which send the statistics to, to the ministry. The, the collecting society is, is already appointed. Um, so this year there will be the first the first the first uh, um, payment. We have a special public fund, the fund for the promotion of creativity. And as you may recall, that the first uh, the first slide, the the, the the new the new the, the amendment law was about the copyright uh, uh, and and the related rights law and the gambling act because the money goes from from gambling. This is not the money is not taken from the library budget. The money is not taken from the local authorities budget. There is the money is not for for public gambling rights. It's not taken from from the budget for for for, uh, for for government budget for for books for libraries. This is a very special uh, fund. And as I as I as I already mentioned, we we were one of the latest countries with uh, paying public domain. Uh, and uh, this is an an, 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 an an acronym. So the government decided, according to its wish, to to extend access to 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 works and to cultural knowledge, to to change the change the the, the, the remove this provision. So so. Publishers who want to publish from um, work from public domain uh, are not obliged to pay any money to the government. That's in a brief. Actually, I, 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 I it was longer than 20 minutes. Thank you. Any questions? So thank you very much, Barbara. For, uh, for your presentation. Um, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. I can hear Great, you can hear. Okay. So we have a question from uh, Stephen, yeah. uh, which was about the orphan works. Yeah. So what I'll do, Barbara, is I will copy the question into the chat pane here. I mean, Stephen has, has put it in, but I'm going to type it in here again so everybody can see the latest question that we're dealing with, and then I'll read it out. So the question was from Stephen. And it's, was there much reflection on the idea that lots of orphan works come from people who never expected to make any money out of them? In other yeah. words, yeah. not all writers are professionals by yeah. a long way. Yeah, this is a very, very good question, but, but actually when we are when we implemented the directive, we, we didn't spend much time discussing this because we are forced to implement the directive as it is. So, so, so this debate uh, was, as far as I remember, in the in, in, in the European Union, when we wanted, to, when there was a discussion about the solution for orphan work. So, um, so I must say that that we 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 didn't stress that very much. We, we but we always that we always as the same like with public lending rights. We always stress that uh, some author authors do not expect to be extra paid. For for having their works in libraries or having their works available online. So so this is a general general comment we we, we made about about extra payment by libraries for for use of work. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Um, and and just on orphan works. Um, I mean, I know that the, the the law is very new, so it's just since November last year. Um, but has it? Do you know? Has it been used at all yet? So, are there any uh, orphan works from Poland registered in the database, um, European no, database? No, there are three institutions. Three institutions which are which are registered in the orphan work database, which is na the National Library, the National uh, uh, Museum in Warsaw, and the, the the public big public library from Warsaw. And I work with this with this library because we had a issue with journal uh, they wanted to to uh, establish whether this journal is orphan or, or not because it's very valuable and we they spent they started at the end of November with clearing rights with diligent search and I must say we are there is a June end of June and they are not finished it yet um, but but they are very close. I hope uh, that would be very interesting case study 
one day we will publish it, uh, how the diligent search for journal in Poland could be provided, but there, I, I can see any, let's say, practical activities towards the orphan works yet. But I must say that there is a big interest in libraries about this about this solution. So so maybe it has to be more promoted also by the Ministry of Culture. I think we we yeah, it, it takes time. Yeah, it takes time. And yeah. and, and, and I think the, the work that you're doing promoting awareness and, and, and making documents and analyzing and doing webinars with among the library community in Poland is yeah. very important for that. Um, so we have another question from David which is what was the most difficult part of the process and how do you solve uh -huh. it? Time. I must say that that, that uh, uh, timing is, is the, for me was the most difficult because because you have to read all documents. You have to you have to react, you have to respond, you have to uh, you have to be prepared. Uh, you have to read really read documents a couple of times to understand the, the, the difference between different versions. Uh, so I must say that that, that, that was the, 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 the main obstacle because uh, that is my extra activity. I, I, I work uh, as a librarian in, in, a, in a company. But, but, but I must say that, 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 that apart from time, you know, which is always a, a, an issue, I think the most imp most difficult was 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 the beginning, when we when we had um, first meeting this uh, uh, under the umbrella of corporate forum, because it is really hard to cut to catch people attention. If you have let me say this, uh, a bunch of lawyers, you know, a group of lawyers sitting in a room, it's hard to catch their attention and make them. You know, force them to to listen. Uh, I'm not saying about the ministry. I'm saying about other stakeholders, to 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 show them that what you are saying is also very important. Maybe this is not in legal terms, but this is your problem, the problem of the organization you represent. So that you have to learn this. You have to you have to be strong. You know, and you, you don't have to um, be stressed uh, uh, easily. You know, you just you just okay. Once again, and repeat, 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 repeat what what you are, what is your uh, message? So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Barbara. Um, mm -hmm. And I would also say that um, what I sort of observed from the Polish uh, the Polish process is that how open and transparent yeah. the process was, and I think that's really 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 good that you could you know at least the process was open you were able to take part as a stakeholder and and be there and 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 be there as one of the one of the stakeholders so i think that's kind of very good and that all the documents are available and everything is open transparent that really helps um with the with the process yeah yeah you always have the right possibility to check what was what was discussed and, and what was the intention? Really, really, that's that's what I what I suggest you if you have uh, if you could influence somehow your 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 consultation process to make it to make it as much transparent and open as it's possible. The other uh, impression that I have from the Polish reform process is that it was really driven a lot by policy. So the, the Ministry of Culture, the government had a policy that they wanted to implement. So they wanted to create uh, wide access to copyrighted content. Um, they wanted to encourage the use of the public domain. They wanted to increase access to education. So they wanted to, you know, introducing mm -hmm. the provisions that that that, that um, to encourage use of virtual learning environments and distance education. So I think that's very helpful when you have a government policy in the background where the government knows what they want and knows what they want to achieve, and then it makes it easier then to um, to discuss the, the technical details mm -hmm. and the issues. And you always agree. yes, yes, and you could always refer to this this policy when you see the 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 solution which you don't um, which which doesn't match the, the the policy in your opinion. You could you could refer and say, okay, the policy. Is 
broader access. So why the solution is is the in the fact limits limits uh, limit the, the the access. So so yeah, you are absolutely right. I saw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So getting information, so getting libraries and getting library interests and library needs into policy documents at an earlier stage before the copyright reform process starts, I think, is important because then, as you say, it pays off when you actually come to uh, a, an opportunity uh, for a copyright reform. Yes, and we had this, we had this, uh, uh, this document in hand because, as, as you mentioned at the beginning, in 2012, there was a, there was a, uh, um, uh, we, uh, we under umbrella of IFAL, we had some consultation. That was my idea that we we had some meetings with librarians and we uh, and we appointed a lawyer and we and we uh, prepared some some document about the problems and and uh, solutions we we see and and on the day when when the first uh, first information about the consultation on on exception and limitation for libraries were were published online i sent i sent an email to my colleagues finally finally we we'll have and we and you know it's 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 really it's really interesting because a uh, uh, um, couple of months later the lawyer who who support supported us with distracting this 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 this, this fir first document he wrote uh, on the basis of that. He wrote an article in 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 uh, very famous uh, uh, legal journal in Poland about the solution and need and reform of copyright law for, for libraries. And now I found this this the reference to this document in the latest uh, 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 advocate general opinion on on e, e uh, uh, lending. So it's it's it is you know. It's really you see the impact. Yeah. Stefan, he asked, how much opposition did you encounter from right holders? There is a question from Stephen. If we like. Oh yes, indeed there is. Yes, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you for that, uh, uh, Stephen. As you imagine, a lot. As you imagine, a lot. Uh, uh, um, Maybe not directly to against the libraries because because the libraries in general are, uh, um, have a good uh, a good uh, um, status in Poland, but 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 um, uh, all um, all um, 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 attempt to 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 broader the exception in general. They were they were commented that that we shouldn't that the uh, current framework is, is fine, it's okay, and we, if you want, if you want to expand the, 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 the access, the, the exception, it has to be remunerated. And I must say, apart from public lending rights, there is no extra remuneration in, 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 this, in this law. So this is also a, a, some kind of, I would say, victory. Yeah? There, is no, there is no extra remuneration for light holders for, for um, expanded exceptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so Stephen follows up with a comment, I was surprised that the Ministry of Culture seems to take such a pro-reform view, not the case everywhere. Uh, I mean, may maybe that's also to do with the, the history um, or the original the, the starting point for this process, which was really when, um, when Barbara, okay. maybe you can fill it in the actor, yeah. exactly. Yeah. As some of you may remember, Poli Polish citizens were uh, at the forefront of, of uh, the fight against the ACTA. So it was, we had a really, really huge debate in Poland, and I think the outcome of this debate uh, was, was, the, uh, was the view of the ministry to, to re-read re the directive and open, expand the access to, to, to to knowledge and culture, and also to make the process so transparent. I think this this the ACTA was was that's that's my private opinion influenced influenced this very much because we had a massive massive the people were on the street really like like during the communist time really so yeah so ACTA maybe was the catalyst yeah or that's, the that, that might yeah. That's my private opinion. 
I'm not sure the ministry will, will, will support it, you know. I'll, but 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 definitely definitely we had a meeting at the Ministry of Culture after the ACTA with some limited group of stakeholders and and that was also a difficult moment because the, the, there was a lot of tension between between people but then we, we started to discuss it in this corporate forum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well thank you Barbara. Um, so I'm looking at the clock and there's two minutes to go. Um, uh, Claudia is typing in, so if Claudia has a question, we can take that uh, take mm -hmm. that as the last question. But I, I would just like to also ask, in general, I mean, what what would be your overall assessment of the results of the reforms for libraries? Um, I yeah, mean, did you mm -hmm. good question? How, too. What what could you have? What what could have? Was there anything that that wasn't achieved, or is there anything that that you know? Are you generally happy with how mm -hmm. it's worked um, out? Um, it is a compromise, and some people say, say that that good compromise do not satisfy, uh, uh, does not satisfy, it's not satisfying for 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 everybody. So so so, um, for sure we had to our libraries had to read it carefully because there are some 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 limits uh, um, to the current or, or previous library practice. Which were simply maybe not fully according to 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 to, to the law. Uh, uh, some 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 issues are still open, like orphan works uh, out of commerce. So it's hard to it's hard to judge. My my I'm personally very happy with with the provision of public lending rights because it could be really uh, unpleasant for libraries in that sense of 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 of, of massive massive. Uh, uh, massive activities so, uh, connected with this. Uh, I was I was fighting for for um, a license uh, agreement for 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 protecting uh, permissible use in a license in the contract. That that I really wanted to have written in the law that that uh, that provision. Uh, 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 of license agreement which are which do not comply with 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 uh, 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 permissible use with exceptional limitations are are null, but I couldn't I couldn't manage to 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 have it even in a draft document. So that that's my private that's my private uh, uh, problem with the with the reform, but but definitely this is a next step for libraries. You know. It's to, to work more uh, in a more uh, balanced way with 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 copyright, but but uh, you have to ask librarians because because they were surprised with 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 the with the um, uh, uh, need of of um, um, providing uh, some 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 statistic about uh, lending and and uh, uh, providing access on terminals that you cannot m have more. Uh, copies available at the same time, so that was quite new for for librarians. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Barbara. Well, thank you very much. Um, so I think we've come to the end of the time for the webinar, um, and and I actually would like to take this opportunity to thank you, Barbara, um, for your hard work and your dedication over the last four years working on this reform process. I know how much work it's been. I know how many consultations there have been how many meetings you have attended and I've given a link on the chat pane there to the, 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 the web page which has the timeline and the documents and all the, 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 the meetings that you contributed to. So and I think without your contribution I think we can say that libraries would not have achieved the results that they have yeah. in the new law. So thank you, thank you very much for that. It yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, it is, and it's, yeah. but I also know it's hard work and it's it's a, a lot of dedication and commitment. So so you know you really. I have to thank to my family. I must say because because without support of my family, yeah, uh, I wouldn't achieve this really. My and I also and my want daughter. to say thank you to Hogan Lovell because they have also yeah. been very generous with That's their time. Um, attending all the meetings and, 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 and you know taking part in all these processes. So I think that's very important um, to have that, yes. that support. Thank you, Hogan Lovell.
Thank you, Hogan Lovells. Um, and also just like to thank uh, Nicholas Copernicus University in Turin who are hosting the webinar for us in the background. So thanks to, to you as well and to the participants for attending. So we'll send you um, the URL and the slides for the recording afterwards. And Barbara and I are also working on a, a, an, an analysis, a more detailed analysis mm -hmm. of the Polish copyright reform. So we hope to have that um, sent out in the next uh, week or so. So that will also give you some more detail about the mm -hmm. issues that Barbara was discussing. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you to, to Barbara and to everybody for attending. I'll um, be around in the room for the next uh, few minutes and if you have any, any other questions or comments, I'd be glad to hear them. Um, but the webinar has ended, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.